Hello and welcome to this technical training segment. I'm Jeremy Cooper with Sabre Consulting. Today we're going to look at a uh, scenario in which you have a pre-existing Cisco infrastructure and you are trying out a couple of Juniper switches in one wiring closet. And that is noted in this, in this reference architecture. Uh, we're not actually using GNS3. I'm just using it uh, as a way to map so that you can visual, visualize the network. This is all lab equipment uh, using a serial connection. So in IDF1, we have two EX switches, and they will momentarily have a redundant connection. And what we're going to see is that causes a, an issue within Spanning Tree that causes the Cisco switch to block this port, even though it's the root bridge. Now, ideally, I believe you would you would set up these two EX switches as a virtual chassis so that there are uh, logically no redundant connections and there's no reason for spanning tree to misbehave. But the, the underlying issue here is that by default, Juniper uses rapid spanning tree 8021W, whereas Cisco uses their own proprietary version called rapid per VLAN spanning tree plus. And this network is stable so long as you don't have any redundant connections in it. But once once we do plug that fiber interface in on GE010, we're going to see that this segment of the network goes down. So before, before we uh, cause the fireworks to start, let's just do a few show commands and pings to verify that we have network connectivity and that, that everything is, is basically configured correctly. And then I'm going to demonstrate how on uh, EX1, we can remove this blocking state and restore network connectivity. So if we do a show spanning tree summary command, you'll see that this EX30, this Cisco Catalyst 3750 is the root bridge for VLANs 1, 110, and 299. And as expected, all the interfaces are in forwarding mode. Uh, this is a root bridge. And so, Again, you can see these are all designated ports as to be expected. And let's verify um, that we can ping. Let's see, dot 10 is EX1. We got it. And the second switch and the Cisco switch. There we go. And clearly that switch was not in the ARP table. That's why we had a momentary delay. So we'll hop over, <coughs> excuse me, to EX1 now and do a show spanning tree bridge command. And you'll see that from Juniper's perspective, it is running RSTP. And the root bridge is a switch ending in 84. And you'll note that um, the priority is 4097, which means that the only, the only uh, BPDU that the Juniper switch is really reading is is that VLAN 1 BPDU and that makes sense because uh, of course the the cost is the the switch priority plus the VLAN ID and this switch can also hit the 3750 as well as the other Cisco switch as well as its neighbor well excuse me helps to helps to ping the correct switch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to console back into the Cisco 3750. And we are about to, we're about to get the party started here. So if we do a show spanning tree summary, and then we plug the fiber connection in, uh, this one right here between EX1 and EX2, <coughs> excuse me, hit the up arrow. Immediately, these two interfaces go into blocking mode. And we are no longer able to ping either of the Juniper switches. Okay, so my, my best guess is, is uh, introducing this loop topology, uh, so to speak, has caused caused some type of BPDU to to go out the EX that just causes the Cisco switch to to okay so now we're going to console into the EX one switch and we're going to introduce what I believe is is the most sensible solution 
Oh, I grabbed EX2. EX1. <clears throat> what I believe is, is the solution that makes the most sense. And that is, we're going to go into edit mode and edit protocols, rapid spanning tree, and we're going to turn off RSTP on this interface right here. Oh, and my apologies, I haven't updated my... Well, I was actually reasonably certain I did. I changed that interface ID to 00. zero. And in fact, uh, here, I'll, we'll go ahead and demonstrate that that is in fact the case. So I've got a top, exit, show spanning tree. I think bridge will do it. No, bridge won't, um, but spanning tree interface will. Okay, yes, so we have a root port right here. All right, edit, edit protocols, RSTP, and we're going to do set interface GE000 to disable. And then we're going to go top edit protocols VLAN spanning tree, VSTP. And we're going to set interface GE000, set VLAN all. Top show pipe compare. Okay, so to recap, we have disabled RSTP from this interface right here. And we have enabled this interface as VLAN spanning tree, which is Juniper's, which is Juniper's uh, own version of per VLAN spanning tree designed specifically to interop with Cisco switches. And then we have turned it on for each VLAN. Now we're going to do a commit and quit, and immediately I'm going to ping the upstream Cisco switch, and it should be a pretty quick. Rest restoration of connectivity. There it goes. Okay, so if I do a show configuration protocols, we can see from the Juniper running config that this is exactly what we've done. And if we do a show spanning tree bridge, I find this really, really, really cool. Uh, basically, it shows us both our RSTP running config right here, and I said running config, it showed us our RSTP output, and then it shows us our VSTP information for VLAN 110, ah, 220, 230, and 299. That's because I haven't disabled those two VLANs on uh, the Juniper side. All they are is just enabled VLANs. Um, you'll note 7-alpha-7-1 is the root bridge which is this switch right here, EX1. All right, good deal. And now I'll discuss what I believe are some practical considerations of what we've seen. And, and that is, per Juniper's documentation and, and my own labbing, uh, Juniper switches and Cisco switches operate pretty much in harmony from a layer two STP standpoint, so long as you don't have any, any redundant connections within the Juniper network. Um, the, the drawbacks you get, of course, then are that if a, if a link goes down, you don't have any ability to create redundancy, but that can be done, excuse me, that can be done through uh, virtual chassis so that it masks any STP and it makes things function much more logically. Now, um, what I'm about to do is completely on the fly, and that is let's change our topology and let's re remove the redundant connection here, right here, GE010. And let's make the redundancy from the EX switch, from this top switch, and see how, how it behaves. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to revert our STP configuration. So we're going to do delete protocols v VSTP, and then we're going to do edit protocols RSTP, and I find it's just quicker to delete the entire config and then set interface all. Top, commit, and quit, ping 10.299.1. And while that's happening, let me reach over and find another Ethernet cable. All right. So we should have, yeah, we've, we've, we've tanked our network again. All right, so on EX1, I'm going to take interface GE0011, and we're going to make it another trunk port. All right, show configuration, interface GE0011. 
zero zero one one, and I can't type. All right, and it's actually already configured as a trunk port. So we'll go into, um, I think we'll go into interface 45 on the Cisco switch. So here, um, ignore this, excuse, excuse this ugliness real quick. As we just make our reference topology look correct. All right, good deal. So this is GE0011. And on this side, we're going to make this FA3045. Okay, so grab my console cable, move it into the Cisco switch. Show run at FA3045. Switch, uh, switch trunk in cap dot one Q, switch mode trunk. All right. Now let's plug this into, well actually, uh, before I do that, I'm disabling the fiber uplink between EX1 and EX2. And let's verify a uh, show spanning tree summary. All right, our interfaces are still in blocking, but we are at this point running into traditional spanning tree timers, so I'm, I'm not too panicked just yet. Yep, there we go. Now these two VLANs are going into the learning phase. And this is a case where I, I wish Cisco had, um, <clears throat> had what Juniper has, and that is, in Juniper, if you want to see an output happen repeatedly, you can do a pipe, refresh, and then the number of seconds. And I don't believe Cisco has that option. So regardless, we have all of our interfaces into forwarding. So let's verify that we can, yep, we can hit the Juniper side. All right. So completely untested waters here. Let's set up the redundant connection directly with the Cisco switch. And all right, the interface goes up. Okay. Well, this is promising. Well, wonderful. Okay. It, it, well, or did it behave as, as expected because those interfaces went into blocking and on a root bridge, all interfaces should be uh, show spanning tree VLAN 110. All interfaces should be designated. It, the, the blocking should occur on the Juniper side. Show spanning tree. What's the command again? Okay. Huh. So it shows up as, so zero, zero is blocked as an alternate port and 11 is a root port. Okay. So Juniper, the, the, the EX switch behaved as I would have expected and the Cisco blocked as well. I, I think the moral to the story is still when you're when you're mixing switch vendors, especially I, I, and in a situation where you're using proprietary protocols, um, don't expect the protocols to behave as as they're supposed to. I think that's the moral to the story. Okay, so now now that I satisfied that curiosity, let's let's go back and let's talk about a few considerations. So. When you're in the process of transitioning from Cisco to Juniper, I think you have a couple of ways th that this can be done. One, uh, switches in closets should be set up as a virtual chassis. Uh, that, you know, I mean, that, that's been a technology that, that both Cisco and Juniper have had for a long time and uh, network admins should be comfortable with it. And if not, it really is not that difficult a technology to set up. Um, that would that would resolve the issue of potential loops like this. The other would be if 
if you uh, insist upon not using virtual chassis technology, then one option would be to leave redundant connections out of the network during the day or weeks that it takes for a, a, a full Juniper, Cisco to Juniper transition. If that isn't feasible, then I believe what we've seen today demonstrates that the safest way to do this is to disable our STP on uplinks to Cisco and configure them to VLAN spanning tree. Um, now, of course, what that means is you know, this is a very simple topology. If you have a network in which you have uh, a, a core MDF switch that is uh, trunking to six, seven, or eight switches, that there's going to be some additional work to be performed when this switch finally gets swapped out to, um, to a Juniper switch. And basically, you're going to have to go back into each closet, perhaps even by console, and go in and do like we did earlier, delete VLAN spanning tree, and then enable RSTP on that trunk interface again. And of course, an alternative method would be to replace the core switch with Juniper first. And then, yes, you still have the same number of ports that are all being changed from RSTP to VSTP, but at least they're all in one location. So as each individual closet is swapped out, you can go in and console directly into the core switch, transition those interfaces back into RST RSTP. So I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you so much for viewing, and I hope this has been a good experience.